All right, hi everybody. I've got a little quick project for us to do. Uh, this is a power washer. One of my neighbors dropped by for me. And it's fairly new. You can see it's a... Uh, is there a new dog toy? <laughs> and it's fairly new. Uh, it has an 875 uh, Briggs and Stratton on it, overhead valve. And he said he used it one time and then it sat for a month and he just can't get it started again. So hopefully nothing drastic. Uh, this is a Troy built, fairly new. I have a Troy built over there that uh, it only ran for four or five times and it was the actual pump, the, the pump under there froze up. So what can we do? We're just going to have to replace the pump. Uh, engine starts no problem. This one I'm going to see uh, see if it'll crank up, and hopefully no, ho hopefully no pump. But, uh, well, let's get started. Let's dig in and, uh, and do the usual. I guess I will uh, give it a test crank. My dog is barking on it. So I'll do the usual. Um, first, I'm going to give it a test crank. Pull it. I might uh, squirt some gas or something down into the carburetor so it'll turn over. If not, then I'll check that. So let's get started. All right, so I took the hose off just to get it all out of the way. I think that's on. Uh, it's got plenty of oil. Looks like it's brand new. And I can smell the gas, so yeah, there's gas in there. Let's give it a test. Everything looks brand new. I'm going to spray some carb cleaner down under there. Now let's see if it'll, if it'll try. Sign. Let's turn that back off and everything else really looks good. So it's no doubt a fuel problem. Um, so I'm going to go in here, take the let's take the bowl off and take a look, uh, see if there's anything in there and it could be water in the gas too considering this is a washer um, a lot of moisture gets around so there might be water that uh, that's sitting at the bottom of the tank but let's take the bowl off and see what we can see all right so let's uh gas coming out. It smells kind of funny. To tell you the truth. 
Yeah, it's kind of kind of yellowish. There's some residue. Definitely some varnish coating everything. And that's definitely clogged up. So all right, well I am going to I'm going to go ahead and take the whole carburetor off and uh, I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Looks like there's varnish all over everything and all that good stuff. So but and I guess when I do that then I'll I'll drain some out of the hose to see what it looks like coming out of the gas tank right I just want to make sure uh, that there's no water in there so this thing was just used one time but then it sat and varnished away. Let's get that off. Yeah, everything just looks everything looks brand new except for all the varnish on the on the carburetor. Uh, I'm gonna crouch down again. One of these days, one of these days, I'm going to get a freaking mower lift. Three eighths or a ten millimeter? Usually a three eighths. It's a ten millimeter now, huh? And I can't get down into that one. All right, so they've. These are 10 millimeter bolts now on the carburetor. I'm used to 3 8 but these are 10 millimeters, but plus it has that uh, TX30 uh, Torx head on it. And I can get in there, but it is. It's tight. It feels like they have uh, some kind of thread locker on it. And probably so, they had thread locker on on those bolts. Alright, let's go. Let's make sure everything comes off. There's no springs flying everywhere. bit of thread locker. like a tensioner spring on the second one. Yeah. We'll let those hang. Looks like we can come out this way.
this one's tough. That this choke rod here is at a sharp 90 degree bend to try to work that out. There's the governor. Here's the choke. There we go. Yeah, it's a lot of varnish. But it all looks like it's just from here down where the where the gas was sitting. Uh, the rest of everything looks okay. But let's finish taking this apart. Yeah, we'll definitely have to clean this off. It looks like that uh, the float pin going in there is jammed in there. Let's see if I can gently get it out of there. Without damaging it. looks like it's coming right off maybe I won't need to uh, to put it in the ultrasonic yeah just with carb cleaner it's coming right off Let's see if it's going to do the same there yep all right good I just need to get this out of there Well, I'm going to take my time doing this, so I'll uh, I'll tune back in once I'm done disassembling this thing. All right, I got it out of there. It was definitely wedged in there, so that needs a good cleaning. And uh, so this one is new to me. It's uh, used to be a solid pin. And you'd put it in and go work it around. Others had an external spring, um, like on Hondas and whatnot, that have a spring in there. This one is an internal spring. So you can see that's spring loaded, and the spring is inside the pin, inside the housing. So hopefully, those will last. But I guess time time will tell. We'll see how many how many of these give out. But uh, all right, so I'm going to finish finish cleaning all this stuff out. It looks like it's just coming right off, right? I think we need an ultrasonic job. Yeah, everything's just. Let me get a little soft brush and I'm just going to clean these out. Clean that valve off and we'll be in business. pipe cleaner brushes here. Get our all the parts cleaned off here. 
Yeah, this, this is not bad. It just wiped right off. out of there but it still has me curious about what has uh, settled in the in the fuel line and in the gas tank too That's that. All right, let's put this thing back together. Then we'll check out the we'll check out the gas tank. All right. Cleaned off my pan a little bit there. Let's uh See what comes out of the tank. Smells kind of weak. I think we're going to have to uh, clean this joker out. this out of the way. clear gas but the surprising thing I was expecting to see some bubbles some water bubbles I don't see the bubbles but I think this gas is still contaminated it's coming out real clear very weak. How much is in there? Uh, quite a bit. I'm just, I'll just have to dump it into a uh, dump it into my trash tank. It's way over there. Let's go ahead and put the carburetor back on. I'll put some fresh gas in it and we'll see how it cranks. All right, I just put uh, fresh gas in there. And my gas, I always put the uh, that Lucas ethanol treatment in it. So it's already been treated. And let's see if she'll crank. 
Pretty smooth, pretty quiet actually for as big a motor as it is. So I guess I'll hook up the hoses, get some water going through there, and I want to make sure uh, if I'm putting water through there that it's not going to bog it down or anything like that. If it does, it looks like there there is a way to adjust. So this is coming from the pump. And, and you can see it'll it'll loosen, tighten, all that good stuff. And there is one of these little tabs here, right there. That you know you can move that in and out and uh, and play with the adjustment on the on the governor. But uh, but I guess that's it. It was just uh, just a simple carb clean. Just had some light varnish starting to uh, starting to coat everything. It wasn't a hard varnish, but it definitely was sticking to uh, all the metal surfaces on the carburetor. wasn't a tough job, but uh, This one's ready to go, so uh, yeah, just uh, thanks for watching. This was an easy one. Thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to subscribe and watch for my next little project. Well, I thought that was a pretty cool feature that I haven't seen before. Um, I guess I'm, I'm working on on older uh, power washers for the most part, but, but this was pretty cool. I noticed this was hooked down to the pump, and... Uh, and it makes sense with the idle down when you when I when I crank it up and there's no water pressure or anything it's it's in an idle speed and it was running you know uh, uh, pretty smooth but once you put uh, water pressure through and start pumping um, boom it's it's like a throttle control and then it it revs up and really pumps the water out so uh, so that was pretty cool